With Embroidery Studio E4, we've introduced new tools called the Graphic Digitizing Tools. And that's this toolbar right here, the second toolbar, Graphic Digitizing. If you accidentally turn it off, like that, you can go up to Window, down to Toolbars. It's the Graphic Digitizing. Now it'll come back up where I had it last. And I'm going to move it back over. Well, let me just leave it right there. <clears throat> um, with this, it makes life so much easier to digitize. Um, we have the open shape. So you can actually just right click and left click and click enter. And it will assign it. Right now, it, this is a run stitch. Now, these are the new outline um, stitch types and the fill stitch types. And the outline stitch types, you can have it to be a run stitch or a triple run, a back stitch, a stem stitch very easily. <clears throat> you can also make it a um, satin run. So if you wanted to make it a column, you can do that and you can very easily change the, the width of the column here. You can also make it a tatami run. Um, <clears throat> Um, with um, Embroider Studio designing, you also get a 3D satin raised um, outline top. And what that does, I'm going to take it out of true view so you can see this. I'm going to zoom in. And I'm going to turn off the underlay. So now there's the column that I digitized. That's just a regular satin stitch. With the satin raised, what it does is it adds four layers of stitches, satin stitches underneath it. So it simulates um, puffy foam. So it's got one tiny little one here and then a bigger one and then a bigger one and then the regular one. It looks the same in true view. You can't tell the difference, but um, it, it there is a difference. Notice when I um, do this, this object right now has 4,414 stitches. If I just do a regular satin stitch, it knocks it down. So it quadruples the stitches. So um, just be aware of that. Um, now you have also the closed shape. So you can also do automatically close it. So if you hit enter, it's going to close it. Now, I was on the run. That's why it did it as a run stitch. Let me make it a little larger. Okay, so now I can actually change it if I want it to be a triple. I can make it that. Notice now my fills toolbar opened or highlights because it's a closed object. You can't fill an open object. That's why these were turned off. But I can now fill this with a satin stitch. I can fill it with a tatami. Oh no, sorry, that's the raised satin. I can fill it with a tatami. I can fill it um, with a zigzag if you need to. I can also make it a vector. So if I need to make it a vector, I can. Um, I'm gonna undo that. Now, if you want to make a border for this, the easiest way to do it, rather than go to your um, simple offsets, is you can duplicate this. So right click and duplicate it. And you'll see over here in the color object list, I have two now. Well, instead of making this one a fill, let's make it an outline satin. So now I have a nice little border, same shape, everything's good. So I'm going to delete that right there. Then I can actually go with this selected, and then let's say I may needed to put some holes in it. Well, we have the tool right here um, called Add Holes, and notice there is three tools within that. Um, first of all, I'm going to add a hole. So I'm going to select my object, because if I don't have it selected, it doesn't highlight. So I'm going to select my object, click the Add Holes, and I'm going to digitize 
a shape. I'm going to hit enter. That's one shape. I can add another one if I need to. So I'm going to put another little tiny one down here and hit enter. I don't need another one, so I'm going to hit enter again, and it makes the holes in it. So now I can select this, and I can, if I don't want the holes, I can take out all of them at one time by hitting this, and it takes out all the holes. Or I could go into reshape and just take out one. So let's just take out this hole. Okay, so you can do either one of those. Now I want to fill this hole. And that's the last tool in this whole tools toolbar uh, is fill holes. Now the fill holes ask you for the underlap for new objects. Okay, if I hit zero, it's going to go right along the edges. And you don't really want that because you need the overlap if you want this to sew properly. So let's do um, a 0.8 millimeter overlap. Notice it converts it, and I'm going to click OK. Now this is a positive, and notice it goes around the outside edge. See, you can see where it's overlapped. Now, if I do a negative overlap, so I'm going to undo that, grab it again, and I'm going to do the same thing, but I'm going to do a negative overlap. Notice how it goes inside. So if I zoom in on this, you'll see that there is a space here. So positive takes you outside and the overlap, and negative takes you inside, and that's what and, and it's a complete separate object, so you can make it whatever color you want and so forth. So now let's delete that and show you. You also have the column, digitize column tools. That is the side to side method with you putting in the stitch angles. But notice it made it an outline. That's because my outline run stitch is the one that's defaulted. So let's make it a satin stitch. And you can see that it's going in the satin stitch. Now, I'm going to also digitize um, the a donut. Okay, and I want it to be a tatami. Now, I want to put a hole in it. So, I'm going to put my hole, and I'm going to make a hole for the donut. Okay, so now I've got the hole in the donut. But because of the way that I did it, it becomes what we call a complex fill. And the definition of that is one stitch angle. So if we look in the reshape, you'll see that the stitch angle is going like this. Well, let me just make it at zero. Okay, so you can see the stitch angle is going like this. Now I'm going to open it up so you can actually see this. I'm going to open it up to two millimeters so you can actually see. I'm going to turn off the underlay so you don't see any of that. These are the travel ones. Okay, so what we can do with this is we can add stitch angles to this. So let's say I want this to look more like an O that you're used to when going in this direction. So I'm going to select my object and I'm going to click on the stitch angles tool and notice that it says plus and there's also a triangle so that means there's more. Well there's also a minus one too so you can take out the stitch angles if you need to. So I'll add the stitch angles first. So now I can add stitch angles. I can add them. I cannot click inside the stitched area. I can click outside the stitch area and I can actually go all the way across. And now I've got my stitch angles. I'm going to hit enter. And you'll notice that it turns those stitches like we wanted to. Now the, not, the minus one lights up. And to take out the stitch angles, now this will take out all of them. So if I hit this, it goes back to one. And the default angle was 60. So that's what it's 
that's what it's at. Now, I want to convert this to a vector real fast to show you what you can do also with this stitched angle tool. If I select this object, notice the stitch angle tool lights up. Well, I'm going to use that. Now, remember, this is a vector. I'm going to grab the stitch angle, and I'm going to put the same stitch angles I put in the last time. And hit enter, and that actually converts it into stitches. So now it is a stitched object and not the vector that we had. So that's an easy way to convert um, vectors just by simply adding a stitch angle. And I could have just added one. So if I undo that, I can grab this, add the stitch angle, and I can just do a zero one and hit enter, and it would do a, a single. And notice that it makes it the, um, it's actually a turning that a turning feel, but it's just a one one angle object. So that's the stitch angle tool and then the fill hold tool. So I'm going to turn those off. You also have the ability to do rectangles or squares. You click and drag. You don't have to drag, just click. And it's just like in Corel. You click on one corner and you go to the opposite corner. If you want a perfect square, you hold the control key down and you can get a perfect square. Any of these, it, you hit escape to get it out of it. Um, any of these can be a fill stitch if you want them to be and a different color. Now, this circle works the same way. It's called ellipse except you go from the center out. So if you'll notice down at the bottom left-hand corner where it says enter center point, you're going to enter the center point of your circle. And I hold the control key down so I can go at a straight line. Now, I'm not dragging. I'm just clicking again. So I'm going to click. Um, let's click about right here. Now, I either have the choice if you read down there, it says press enter for circle or enter oval point. I can either add an oval point and make it this, or I can hit enter right now and it will create a perfect circle. So I can now make this a fill stitch. I can make it a satin border, do whatever you need to. And that's this. Now, you also have the basic shapes. Click on this. And these are actually borders. It's what the, it, it, it says basic shape here, but it's called borders. So all you have to do is find one, and there's several. I like this little flower here. Click that. Now, if I just click one time and drag, I can make it all wonky. But I'm going to hold the control key down so I can get it nice and perfect. So again, my defaults run, but I want to make it a fill, and I can do that very easily. Um, those of you that have designing will have the freehand open, which you just click on and draw. There's a run stitch. You have the freehand closed as well. And they too can be any of the ones up here. And that's for designing. Decorating does not have that. So those are your new graphic digitizing tools. They make life so much easier. And the fields, this is the um, outline stitch tops and the fill stitch tops. That's these two new toolbars. When they first come up and you turn them on, they will come up down here, but they are movable just like any other 